What if I told you pi, this pi, has a pattern? Yeah, that's right. Pi's got a pattern. It's 3.14159, and I, that's all I remember, to be honest. I know it goes on and on and on forever. But the magic about pi is that it goes on and on and on forever with no discernible pattern in the way that the decimals are presented. There's no repetition, and yet they go on and on forever. That's considered an irrational number. It's I love the name, irrational. It's not even thinkable that we could have a number that doesn't eventually have a pattern and goes on forever, so we call it irrational. But pi does have a pattern. I'm going to show you what the pattern is, and then if you have some calculus in your background, you might want to keep watching the video because I'm going to tell you why that pattern works, which is pretty cool. So pi is equal to, you ready for this? 4 times 1 minus 1 third plus one fifth, it's actually a really simple pattern, minus one seventh, plus one ninth, minus, and so on and so forth. What we're doing here is you're alternating signs. So you'd go minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. And this has to go on and on indefinitely, infinitely long. And all we're getting here, we're getting ones in the numerator, numerator being the top of a fraction, denominator, denominator being bottom of a fraction, we're just being every odd number. The miraculous part about this is pi cannot be written as a fraction itself, where p and q are each integers, right? Integers, for those of you that haven't seen them in a while, they are all of the whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and they're opposites. We cannot write pi as a ratio, as a division problem of that. And yet pi can be actually made up of a whole bunch of rational numbers. So there is a pattern to how they get pi, and there has to be, I mean, think about it. How do they get a decimal that goes on and on forever? How do all these people get all these decimals? How do the computers calculate it with this pattern here? So I've got a little bit of homework for you. I want you to see how this pattern works. So I'm gonna do out the first little bit. So what I do is I actually multiply through by four with the distributive property like this. So the first round, I'm going to do 4 minus 4 thirds. That's the first little bit right there. That's 4 minus 4 thirds right there. And that's equal to 2.6 repetent. It keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I'm going to add to that 4 fifths. So I add on to this number, 2.6 repetent plus four fifths. Where do I get four fifths from? Four times one fifth. And when I do that in my calculator, I get 3.46 repetent, already closer to pi. And then I'm going to add on, a sub, well, rather subtract four sevenths, and let's see what I get. Okay, we bounce back over. I'm going to be lazy here. I'm just going to write this out. 2.895 and so on and so forth. Now my calculator is doing an approximation there. And then I'm gonna add on to that four ninths. And let's see what we get. Hmm, 3.339, getting closer to pi. Now I've only gone out, keep in mind, to, to four ninths. Then we're gonna subtract from that. What comes next? You guessed it. Subtracting four elevenths, adding four thirteenths, and so on and so forth. So you essentially, when you're doing your calculator, you do four minus four thirds plus four fifths minus four sevenths plus four ninths and so on and so forth. And these numbers are gonna bounce back and forth. One number is gonna be below pi, one number is gonna be above. But notice how already we've gotten a little bit closer to pi. And the farther out you go, the closer you get to pi. So have fun with that, peeps. It's absolutely bonkers. I love it. Why math why? For sure, you will see that sometimes the why is just crazy, and that's what I want to show you right now. So if you haven't had calculus in a long time, you might want to shut off the screen for now because the next stuff's going to be heavy. So I'll see you next time in why math why, or you'll continue on right now and be boggled. So here we go. The reason why pi ends up being that pattern comes from the fact that we have this, and you might look at that and say, what the heck is that? Well, if you haven't had calculus in a while, this 
function right here, this is the derivative or the rate at which the inverse tangent function moves. An inverse tangent's derivative is this, which means that the integral of this with respect to x is equal to inverse tangent. That was a big negative one there, sorry guys. So what does that mean? Well, here's the thing. Not much, to be honest, except for the fact that this is of the form of a geometric series, a over 1 minus r. And a geometric series can be written as an infinite sum. Now, this right here is of that format. a would be like 1 over 1 minus a minus x squared. Now why is that interesting? Because an infinite geometric series looks like this. You've got the summation n equals 0 to infinity of that first term 1 times that common ratio minus x squared raised to the n. And when you expand that out, that Keep in mind, all of this is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. That ends up being 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th minus x to the 6th plus x to the 8th and so on and so forth. Why is that important? Well, remember, if we integrate this, which is equal to this series, so if we integrate the series, in other words, then we'll get arctan. So that means that arctan, or tangent inverse of x, is equal to the integral of all this. Well, the integral will be x minus x cubed over 3. And by the way, if you're still watching this video after I told you not to watch it, if you haven't had a lot of calculus or haven't had it in a while, this is probably scaring you. You're probably like looking at this or listening to my voice being like, what is up with this dude? Some kind of necromancer or something. This guy's crazy. It's just math and magic, peeps. So we take the integral there. Now, here's the thing tangent inverse at 1 is equal to pi over 4. And tangent inverse at 1 is the same as plugging 1 into this infinitely long number. Hmm. So what we end up getting is that pattern that we saw on that last page. And that goes on and on like that forever. Now, we know the tangent inverse of 1 is pi over 4, which means we know this equals pi over 4. So pi is equal to, we just multiply both sides by 4, 4 times 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth. This is nuts. And so on and so forth. And we get the pattern that we saw before. So really, guys, this is pretty, pretty extraordinary in that we're using trigonometry with arctan. And the reason why we use arctan is because it relates nicely with 1 and with this geometric series. We're using the idea of a geometric series, which is a series that has a common value that's being multiplied by every previous term to get the next term. In this case, we're multiplying 1 by minus x squared, minus x squared by minus x squared to get x to the fourth, and so on and so forth. We take the integral of this, because the integral of this, which is equal to the series, is arctan. If I plug in 1 into either the series or arctan, I get pi over 4. Solving for pi, I get four times that pattern. And so pi is equal to the product of four and this infinitely long series. Truly remarkable. Blows my mind every time. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next slide uh, down some sort of math wonderland, wonder hole, whatever you want to call it. We'll be doing it soon, and I'll have another special pi day edition where we prove the area of a circle is pi r squared. All right, y'all. Hope this was fun for you. Peace. Keep mathing hard.